in. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to another March Madness update, another bracket update for me. I'm going to go over the Elite Eight games. I wasn't able to do an update video yesterday, a little bit under the weather with not really a strep throat. I was able to stave off the strep throat. It was more so just a sore throat that I got on Friday night and it kind of lingered. But uh, I am fine here today. And we But here is the update. UConn, just pure domination. UConn has had four straight games, all tournament games, with a game score of 100. It's unprecedented. And they destroy Illinois. The 30 to nothing run. Ridiculous. And score 49 points in the second half. They are on to the Final Four. And they're going to be facing Alabama. Not too surprised. Bama winning a higher scoring game. I would expect UConn to easily beat Alabama. I think North Carolina choked in terms of that region. North Carolina only lost to Alabama by two with R.J. Davis, by far their best player who they rely on, going 4 of 20. And I believe he was 0 of 9 from 3. So your best player by far goes 4 of 20 and you lose by 2 points and still score 87 points. That's a choke, man. If he would have just had slightly you know, a better game... I think it would be North Carolina. North Carolina possibly against UConn. I knew Bama would win in cover. UConn, they were sitting minus 9.5, minus 10. They end up easily covering even after a competitive first half. Purdue beats Tennessee. So this really could have helped my bracket if Tennessee would have won this game. And Tennessee was up by like 13 with about four minutes left in the first half. Purdue makes a crazy comeback, ends up leading at the end of the first half. And Zach Eady and Purdue, the number one seed, after losing to a 16 seed, they are in to the national champion, or excuse me, to the final four, excuse me. And then you do have NC State beating Duke. Kind of a fun upset there with Duke really controlling the first half, lower scoring game. And it sets up a Burns versus Ed. Kind of a fun matchup there. I hope NC State wins. I highly doubt it. When it comes to March Madness, it's just so ridiculous. NC State, if you go back to, I think it was the second round game in the ACC tournament when NC State was like 19 and 14 on the year, they should have lost to Virginia. And if they would have lost that game to Virginia, they were down by three. All Virginia had to do was make a free throw with five seconds left to put them up by four and the game's over. NC State probably doesn't even make the NIT. That Virginia misses the free throw, they don't foul, NC State makes a three, banks it in, and the rest is history. And that's just how, like if NC State, if Virginia makes one free throw, NC, we're talking about NC State, well no one's talking about them, they're just this random team that couldn't even make the NIT, they finished like 19 and 15 on the year. Now they're a Final Four team, it's just crazy how in a single game, all of these things can happen. So NC, if anyone had NC State like not trolling, I, I don't see how it's possible. I mean, maybe because NC State had a lot of momentum, if you want to go with the crazy high double-digit seed making the Final Four, I could see it. When it comes to my personal brackets, I guess the analytics always win. It does look like UConn's going to win again. This one sitting in the 95 or 94 percentile. My main bracket, I needed Tennessee. Well, it was, it was screwed when Houston lost. Yeah, my main bracket was done when Houston lost, there's no doubt. Even if Tennessee would have won, it would probably be in like the 67th percentile, but still, because I had I needed Houston to win the national title. You know, I do have UConn. Oh, I had UConn losing to Arizona. Yeah, Arizona losing is the other thing. Arizona losing to Clemson, man. And I'm not like trying to give excuses, but 5 of 28 from 3. You know, it, it, that's just the problem. Like, I feel like if Arizona just hits a few more threes, they beat Alabama. You know, Arizona was the best team in this region. North Carolina really should have beaten Alabama as well. R.J. Davis shooting really badly. As for Purdue, there's no qualms with Purdue making it. I, I think Purdue was just really good throughout this tournament. You can say, well, look at the foul disparity. Disparity. You know, they're always getting all the calls. But when you've got E.D., they're obviously going to foul him. The dude's like 7-4. And I, I give Purdue credit. You know, I had Purdue into the Elite Eight. Oh, I, yeah, I did have Purdue into the Elite Eight. And then I had them losing to Tennessee. And to be fair, Tennessee, they needed to close the first half strong. If Tennessee would have went into the locker room with like an eight or nine point lead, they could win that game. Giving up the lead right before the end of the first half is demoralizing because it's, it's actually a double whammy. Think about it. 
if you give up like a 9-0 run late in the first half and then you go to that locker room giving up a 9-0 run, the game completely resets when the second half starts. Normally when it comes to runs, teams will go on runs, then they'll go cold. But giving up a late first half run like that when Tennessee was up by 11 or 13 and at the end of the first half you're losing by two, it's demoralizing. It's completely demoralizing. So when it comes to the, I actually don't know the point spreads for Saturday. Uh, let's take a look at the point spreads. Purdue sitting minus eight and a half. Yeah, so guys, there's really it's really hard to say when it comes to like uh, NC State winning this game. It seems very unlikely. I would like to see NC State win it. It's you know, I, I think it's going to be Purdue versus UConn, and, and I would imagine UConn would win the national title at this point. It's impossible not to pick them. Uh, I do want to talk about UConn and just how dominant they've been and show the analytics behind it, but <laughs> UConn sitting minus 11 and a half. Yeah, it, this is just, we're not used to seeing stuff like this. UConn is basically been a double-digit favorite for every single game during this tournament, maybe outside of the Illinois, or were they minus 11 in, against Illinois? They they were like minus 9 and a half or minus 10. I mean, They've been at least nine point favorites for every game, possibly going into the national title because they're 11 and a half point favorites against Alabama and they should be. Alabama is, you know, maybe if UConn has an off night, Alabama has the offensive firepower to hang with them. Alabama is not nearly as complete of a team as UConn. If this was UConn, Arizona, I still think UConn would win, but it would be a cool matchup. Purdue, NC State. You know, I, I was never a believer in Duke. Duke shouldn't have beat, beaten Houston, guys. There's no way. I think Houston beats NC State, too, if they're able to beat Duke. Um, so, that's unfortunate. But, listen, having an 11 seed, that's cool. You know, when it comes to the top brackets, I guess we'll just take a look to see. In terms of my group, um, show groups, go to my group. I'm basically in the 50th percentile of my group. I'm 597 out of 1400. So it's basically exactly even overtime. All right. Well, at least this dude has a name. 99.9 .9 percentile UConn national champion. He did not have NC state. He did have Purdue over Marquette. So he's got Purdue and UConn and then, and he did have Alabama. Yeah. This dude really deserves to win. I'll be honest, he deserves to win. If you have if you have UConn, Alabama, and uh, Purdue, and then you get the national championship game correct, yeah, he's probably going to end up winning uh, my bracket challenge, at least it looks like. I'm not sure who this is. I've never seen him in my chat or anything like that. Um, but that is just the number one bracket. Does anyone else have a chance in terms of my group? You do have another guy, it seems like 99.8 percentile. There are a few, <laughs> Optic, uh, there are a few that are in the 99 percentile, but uh, that's just the update there. And then when it comes to just how dominant UConn has been, I don't know if this will show, I might have the screen cut out, unfortunately, but UConn is just like what they're doing in the tournament. It, it's ridiculous. Look at this. I don't know if it'll show this, but 100, per, 100 game score, 100 game score, 100 game score, 100 game score, and now they're minus 10 against Alabama analytically, so UConn is just, I mean, I have to predict, you know, Purdue, ver, actually, I could look at my second chance bracket, I don't think my second chance bracket is doing that, well, maybe it's doing okay, I, where do you even see your second chance bracket? It's like, it's impossible to find it. I seriously can never find my second chance bracket, but um, yeah, I don't think I can find it. Not that it really matters, you know, not that it really matters at this point, but that's just the update. When it comes to the analytics bracket, I do have Houston as the other team in the national title. That's not going to happen, obviously. So Purdue, maybe if Purdue wins at this bracket, ends up going to the 100th percentile, but that's just the update. I would expect it to be UConn against Purdue in the national title. Guys, that's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.